I pulled up to the sign, uh, the stoplights coming into Alamos, and I got pulled over. They could smell alcohol in the car because of all of the people that had been in there. And then they wanted to do a breathalyzer on me, and I ended up blowing a 0 0.001, which still was showing that I was drinking. And I mean, I asked him to let me off and just like, I wasn't even that drunk and everything, but it was the point that I was 20 years old and drinking. And he gave me the ticket right then and there. My family was very disappointed in me. Like, they lost a lot of trust. And I mean, my younger brother definitely looks at me like a role model and this wasn't what you wanted to see his older brother doing. And I mean, my parents, of course, I mean, the, the trust was gone. They wondered how honest I was being with them at all. Uh, my reaction when Michael received his ticket was not very thrilled, to say the least. <laughs> the judge told me that I had two options. I could pay the fine, do the community service, just like everybody always does, or I could take this the rethinking drinking class, and it could drop it from my record and I might actually learn something. In doing restorative justice, I, I learned about what the effects of alcohol and marijuana and tobacco actually were and what they could do to my brain and just how they affect everybody around me, not just myself. After a while, it kind of got to the point to where he was onboarded about it and he was like, okay, well, if you'll learn something from this, then I'll go with you, but I don't want you getting in trouble anymore. And Yeah, there was some hesitance of me wanting to have to go to these classes, but uh, after attending the classes and seeing the other folks there and what it was about and how it was trying to help bond and know what he had done wrong and why it was wrong, it really seemed to help. But it was good just sitting there and getting to be able to spend time with him due to the fact that he didn't, don't live at home anymore. Um, just getting to sit down and see what he was doing in his life and how work was going and everything like that really meant a lot to me and to his mom. In whole, I think the best part of those classes was the fact that it was starting to rebuild trust with just my family in particular. Like I felt like I had let them down really hard. That to me was like the best part of the class was the actual like repairing trust part. I th think that this process has been good for the fact that it drew Michael back to his younger brother and sister. There are people that deserve a second chance and not everybody needs to be entered into the criminal justice system from day one. I mean, you, you talk about all ages, you can be charged at 10 years old with a crime. So 10, 11, 12, even up to 19 and 20 years old, if it's their first offense, um, ha should have the opportunity to realize what they've done, how it impacts everybody as a whole, and correct their actions. It also helps with the overcrowding in the jails. I mean, do you want to send somebody that's 15, 16 year old to, to jail for a, a minor theft? when a drug dealer could be the one occupying that space rather than somebody committed a minor shoplifting. Yeah, so you had a chance to hear from Michael, who is really an extraordinary example of a young person who came into CRP's programming, uh, really uncertain about what the benefits might be, really excited about an alternative to the justice system because it would afford him potentially some of the opportunities that he wanted to pursue his goals later in life. And I think it's really indicative of the work that we do, that you can see young people who participate in a process like this that might have some degree of skepticism, but they come into it and they realize that, you know what, I'm gonna get something out of this that's meaningful because I'm not just on the side of the road picking up trash for uh, some useful public service. I'm not just paying a fine. I actually have to really think about my behavior. I have to talk to the people that are impacted. I have to find ways to repair those harms that were done. And that's something that will last with these youth that we're working with, and they'll take that with them forever. We see a huge benefit within the city of Alamosa, and, and if we can just get the entire valley to participate in this program, um, I think the valley would benefit because everybody in the valley comes to Alamosa to shop, to work, to, and there are people that go to other communities, so if we can get all the communities working together and building that strong partnership that we have with our municipal court and the CRP staff, uh, I think the entire valley would benefit. 
So it really is impactful for these youth. Um, it's very indicative of, again, the work that we do. Michael's story is, is a great story and one that we're happy to highlight today and excited to highlight today. Um, but we recognize also that his is just one story out of many. And there are many youth who get to experience that type of experience on a regular basis because of the work that we do and because of the support of our community. I would recommend this program to the youth and families because it, it's there to try to help the kids, not push them through a system that they've gained nothing because they've went through a judicial system and it's done. This has given them options, helping them try to re glue the bond with their families and maybe make their the kids understand that your family is here for you. You just got to open up and let them know that we can't help you if you're not asking. My dad actually trusts me now. He actually believes the things that I'm saying. Because what we do is often something that happens in people's most vulnerable states, it's not something that we often hear a lot about. And so you might not have heard of the Center for Restorative Programs before today, and that's okay. But we do want you to know that we're here, the work that we're doing is important, it impacts you, um, it makes our community safer, it makes our community a better place, and hopefully people can, can learn that through stories like Michael's and, and through stories of, of people who have been through our programming. So thank you for, for your interest in supporting this organization and in making the work that we do possible so that we can continue to produce more of these stories and more of these happy, uh, happy endings. <laughs>